Welcome to the History Roadshow. This week we're taking a tour around Kirby Hall. Kirby Hall was begun in 1570 by Sir Humphrey Stafford, but completed by Sir Christopher Hatton, one of Queen Elizabeth I's favourite courtiers. It was one of many great Elizabethan houses built in the hope of receiving the Queen on her annual progresses around the country. While Kirby is smaller than some of the other houses, its richly carved decoration is exceptional and shows the arrival in England of new ideas in architecture and design. The decoration of the courtyard is one of the most innovative features of Kirby Hall. Around all four sides are columns which run through both floors of the building. This courtyard is the first example of such details being used to unite the design of a whole facade. The upper level of the courtyard features a number of windows with alternate triangle and rounded pediments, which are works of Nicholas Stone. The central window dates to 1638 and the others right and left are dated 1640. The central opening has another iron balcony, and another Nicholas stonework includes the bust of Apollo, which was almost certainly carved in his workshop. The porch, as it's known, is one of the most lavish pieces of architecture in England. The Thorpe family of masons were the probable builders who have used French pattern books to source the work that would feature. On the lower two floors, columns are again at the forefront, but these have been finely carved. Upon the top curved gable a further nine tiny columns. In the 16th century, one of the most important rooms to be found would be the Long Gallery. The one at Kirby took up the whole of the West Wing, overlooking the gardens. It had a barrel-shaped ceiling with plaster decor, some of which still survives today. The gallery was used for a number of reasons, including a place for neutral members of the household to do business together. The Great Hall was based on a medieval plan, and as you came through the porch into the hall originally, there were once two doors leading to service rooms above the passage. There might have been a minstrel's gallery. You would then have been confronted with long tables where the household would eat. Today, the roof has been restored to its original colour, and if you stand back, you can still imagine the great fireplace with a roaring fire, keeping everybody warm. The bay window is one of the ground floor bedchambers, with a pulley board for raising festooned curtains above the window. The staircase within a house was always to impress visitors, where a grand and regal feel were guaranteed. The spacious stairs had a stone handrail fitted in the late 16th century, and at the top you would then enter the Grand Chamber. However, this is much different today from what it would have been originally. The columns were added in the 18th century. The West Garden at Kirby existed by the 1580s when it appears on Ralph Cheswell's surveys with the earliest images of the new house. These show an irregular enclosure labelled Garden and Orchard, which was probably remodelled in the early 17th century into a relatively plain design with raised terraces. What you see today is a recreation of its appearance in the 1690s. Christopher Hatton was a star of the Elizabethan court. It was said that he first caught the Queen's eye through his dancing ability. He accrued many promotions, including Lord Chancellor and Knight of the Garter, yet he rarely visited the estate. But now you can step back in time and imagine the lavish and detailed construction of Kirby Hall. <laughs> 